I want to let you know that not only myself, but Paul Reimer and uh, Michael Hayes, who've worked with the chaplaincy program, have got to meet some very character individuals. One of those individuals is Nathan Lewin. I mean, I think it's crazy enough that you stand in front of a puck sailing at sometimes your head, Nathan. But I also appreciate the fact that you got guts in your faith to share it. And so why don't you come up here Thank you, Kevin, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, first of all, I really have to thank everyone for being here. I mean, this event would not be half of what it is without you guys coming out to it. So a big round of applause for everyone being here today. It was amazing seeing this idea turn into what it is today. Um, it, it started off by just kind of mentioning it to uh, a few people around town, and, and it's, uh, God's taken it, and he's run with it. I mean, it's, it's turned into an amazing night. Um, I'm having fun. I hope everyone else is as well. Um, anyways, to my story. My story begins uh, very, very easily. Um, I, I grew up in a Christian home. I uh, accepted the Lord in my life at a very early age. And um, from then on, I was, my heart was pretty much set on the Lord, and I, I gave my life to Him. Um, I started playing hockey pretty much as, I could, uh, as soon as I could walk and talk, and I loved it. And started playing ice hockey when I was 11. Um, and whenever I played ice hockey, so many people ask me why I became a goalie, and sometimes I don't know. Um, but the reason actually is that I never trusted anyone else. <laughs> I had to do it myself, so, so if, if you're wondering, that's why. Um, now, as, as I continued to, to grow in my life, um, I had a dream. A and this dream really changed my life. And, and, and as simple as it may sound, it, it really impacted my life in a way that, that I changed my whole perspective on how I, I was motivated and how I did life. Um, anyways, well, I'll come back to that later. Um, so my faith really became my own at about that time. And um, as I continued in my career, um, I really had no idea what the WHL was until I began being scouted for it. Um, and I remember sitting behind the computer, uh, waiting for my name to pop up, and it popped up beside the Cooney Ice. And a year and a half later, here I was in wonderful Cranbrook. I had never heard of it before. <laughs> and as many of you know, that, that year would bring a lot more than I anticipated. Uh, after playing just one game, uh, I was in a rollover car accident, suffered a concussion, um, and then two months later was sent down to Junior A in Kelowna. Um, and that was tough. I mean, it was hard for a 16-year-old kid just getting away from home to, to deal with these things, the frustrations, you know, playing poorly and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and it was hard. And, and I, I, I remember coming home many, many nights and saying to myself, I feel so empty and I feel so alone out here. And I had to find something to cling to. And uh, even as I, as I continued my career, you know, I came back here uh, when I was 17 and um, halfway through the season suffered another concussion and was out for the rest of the season. And, and same thing, you know, it was just so depressing and so hurtful to, to have to go through these things, and, and I, I just questioned the meaning behind it. Um, and then again, as an 18-year-old dragging myself through another season, um, I, I just didn't feel fulfilled. But the one thing that I could say was, was, was so great about this time was my faith. Um, I was pushed, I had to grow, I had to mature, I had to cling to God with everything I had because He was all I had at that time. Um, I, I just... I see the growth and the, the things that he taught me, and I promise you that I would not be standing here before you today had I not gone, gone through every single one of those things that I had to go through. 
Now, we're going to take a step back here and go back to my dream. Now, in this dream, I remember I was sitting with uh, my closest family, my closest friend, everyone I love dearly, and uh, the clouds above me began to stir and move really quickly, and the world began to end. And this was really troubling for me. Even as a 13-year-old kid, I was a very abstract thinker, and I just remember thinking to myself, well, does it matter if I go to school the next day? Does it matter if I make the NHL, if the world's just going to end anyway? And this just, it bugged me, and it just ate away at me, and I had to find something to counter this and to say, yes, there is meaning. And so that is what I had to find. I had to find what would be important when all of my relationships, when all of my endeavors, when my hockey career, when everything that I do is finally one day done, what is left? And this is what I struggled with. And, you know, the answer that I came to, you know, as I searched, you know, as in my faith and in my life and the people around me, I realized that, you know, so many people will throw around the reasons that why we exist. Why are we here on earth? And I asked myself the same question, but wasn't satisfied with any of the answers I got until I came to the notion of I am here on this earth to have a relationship with God. And that is where I found my meaning. That is why I was created, and that is why I'm here today. Now, also, going back to the dream, uh, I was with my family and my closest friends and everyone I love dearly um, and that love me dearly, and I found more meaning there. I mean, these relationships that I have with these people, these wonderful relationships, this is important. This gave my life meaning. This was... This pushed me to be, to be a better person. It pushed me closer to God. And, and these relationships were very meaningful. And they gave such a... And the love that, that we shared was very powerful. And yet, there was still a higher purpose. And that was the relationship with God. That relationship with God changed everything that I, I would do. Because everything was for that reason. You know, the relationships I had with other people and the relationships, or the relationship with God Himself was such a core value to my life that I chased after, after it with all my heart. You know, God really took me on this journey and He took me in amazing ways on this adventure and He took me to a place where I found meaning in Him. So, so often we, we search for meaning in other places and we search for meaning in, in things that don't fulfill us. And, and that, when I was going through my concussions and my struggles, that is what killed me, is I couldn't find something fulfilling. And finally, when, when I discovered these things, I was full. No matter if I was making 30 saves down here at this end or getting sat on the bench over there, it didn't matter. I was still fulfilled when I went home. And I guess that's what I wish for everyone, is that you would find that meaning and that purpose and that, that drive behind you that makes life so fulfilling and so full that there's no emptiness left inside you. And I'm telling you, from my experience, that fulfillingness, that fullness is in Jesus. Now, I want to thank everyone once again for coming here and, um, and for supporting this. I mean, I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, I know my teammates are out there somewhere cheering me on. It's great to have your support. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, guys. I'll give it back to you, Kevin. Hey, make no, make no bones about it, folks. Uh, Nathan loves a beef dip at Boston Pizza. Nathan loves to play hockey. He loves it. He was out practice the, this past week because he, he had a little altercation. He said, I just want to get back in and play. He loves to play. 
But make no bones about it, folks. This guy loves the Lord. Okay? Bottom line. Thank you, Nathan, for sharing. Thank you. That's awesome.